in the last stream, we were working on upgrading our storage situation by getting ourselves our first 16K storage disk and by installing a bunch of regular storage drawers and compacting storage drawers to allow us to offset a lot of the items that we have a large quantity of away from our disks entirely, thus giving us so much more space to work with. And at the very end of the last episode, we were also working on crafting up some speed upgrades from Pneumaticraft to allow us to make almost everything in Pneumaticraft faster. Now, what I've gone ahead and done between streams is I have continued my base building uh, adventure. I have tried to tidy up a lot of the uh, mess that was left at the end of the last episode. And so essentially I've gone ahead and built four of these semicircular additions to the base on each of the four cardinal sides. We have one over here. This is for our pneumaticraft setups. So over here on the left, we have our original pressure chamber. This is set up in the exact same way. The only thing that has changed is that I've changed all of the drawers here from regular oak drawers to framed drawers. These framed drawers I've made slightly differently to the ones that we made in the last episode. Those were made with sandstone. These ones here are made with blackstone bricks, uh, not the regular blackstone from modern Minecraft. This is uh, Ben's Caveopolis black colored stone bricks. These ones right here uh, that you get from the black colored stone, which of course you make with the regular stone and the black spray can. And then on the front, we have marble. So I've made a few drawers like that and uh, kind of dotted them around just to make sure that everything looks the same. Other than that, the setup here is basically identical. Although I did fix the mistake that we made the first time around because initially I didn't put a hopper underneath my extractinator. And so the previous setup that we had wasn't actually working. Like it was producing manual, but the only reason it was producing manual is because it was burning through the backlog of lapis that we already had. That has now been fixed. And so now we are making more lapis and more iron. And uh, if I do want to actually finish this, I do need to do uh, one of these and one of those. That's gonna pull the lapis up into the compacting drawer. And then that's gonna pull the blocks of lapis over into this drawer, which of course feeds them into the pressure chamber. And all of that is being powered by the liquid compressor on the back here. At the back, we have our oil generation system. So I have downsized a little bit because we were making way too much crude oil. So now we just have three fluid generators, each topped with a vibrant alloy block, all making crude oil, which is then being used in the refinery to make the diesel, the uh, kerosene, the gasoline, and the LPG. We've got the exact same setup down here for placing and recreating the scorched iron bricks and hiding out back here. We've also got our thermopneumatic processing plant. And then the only new thing that's been added to the base is this second pressure chamber here, which for the time being is just going to be a general purpose pressure chamber for if we need to make anything. And speaking of making stuff, I think the first thing that I'm gonna do in today's episode is I'm gonna grab some iron and I'm just gonna get another stack of compressed iron going because we are going to be doing a lot more new matter craft work in today's stream. Over on this side, we have our chicken area. So I've gotten rid of that uh, horrendous little chicken pen that we had previously. And now we've got a little cluster of much smaller chicken pens that are designated to each individual set of chickens. We do have one rogue gold chicken in here, which is not right, but we've got diamond chickens, emerald chickens, gold chickens, enderpearl chickens, and then a space at the end here. We've also got more space, of course, over on this side with all of our 10, 10, 10 chickens being crammed into this final pen. The only other thing that I've done here, uh, because you may notice we don't have all of our chickens, none of the die chickens are here, and none of the non-10-10-10 chickens are here. No chickens were harmed in the uh, moving of this base. All I did was grab the chicken stick. I forget the name of it. It is called the chicken basher. This guy right here, which is super easy to make, by the way. It's one egg, one stick, and one feather. And the idea with this is that you can do a quick bonk on a chicken's head and it will turn that chicken into an item that you can just pick up off the ground. And then at any point in time, you can right click and the chicken goes back down. So you just give it a quick bonk, right click, and you get an itemized version of that chicken that you can then place into a chest of some sort. And it just kind of helps us save space. And uh, going forward, if we need to do any breeding, for example, with a glass chicken, we can just come in here and uh, take one of those glass chickens out do the breeding and then put them back in when the job is done. And we can also do the same with like our diamond chickens. These are all one, one, one chickens, but I do plan on breeding them between streams up to hopefully 10, 10, 10 chickens. So we can start getting diamonds, emeralds, uh, gold and enderpearls much faster. And as we go, we can then start, you know, getting rid 
of the one 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 chickens and kind of retiring those into the chest so that the only chickens that we have in our pens are the ones that we actually want. And right at the back here is all of the nests that we are eventually going to move our chickens to because right at the end of the last episode, we did of course set up a little bit of automation over here. So all of these chickens are receiving seeds automatically and all of their wares are being imported through this importer into the refined storage system. The plan is going to be to move these chickens along with hopefully some new chickens over to this side of the base. Uh, real quick, let me grab a little bit of water. Fantastic. We're going to move all those chickens over to this side of the base. I'm going to continue to add more chickens kind of around the outside edge. And if we need it, we can also fill in this space here with even more chickens. There's loads of space to add chickens in the future. And we're going to start pulling uh, from underneath them to the system for all of our resource generation. That's the plan. And I'm hoping to utilize drones to move all of the seeds from this farm over to maybe another draw over here that can then be used to uh, distribute the seeds amongst all of the nests. And that kind of leads me on to what I want to work on in today's stream, at least initially. And that is getting the PCBs from Pneumaticraft. Because if we want to get the logistics drone up and running, the logistics drone requires a programming table in order to tell it what we want it to do. And to make the programmer, we need a finished PCB. The finished PCB is also kind of a gateway into more advanced blocks and items from Pneumaticraft. Things like uh, the advanced liquid compressor, which is going to allow us to produce pressure faster, is gated behind the PCBs because for the advanced liquid compressor, we need the advanced pressure tubes. The advanced pressure tubes here require the advanced controller and this entire setup here for the laser program. Again, we'll get to this fairly shortly, but this requires PCBs. And so we're gonna start today by getting some PCBs. Before we do that though, I would like to take the sugar that we do have. We've only got 68 sugar, which is unfortunate because I have been on for quite a while since the end of the last episode, quite a few hours making sure the base is ready to go. And I noticed that when I came over, we had not much sugarcane compared to where I thought we'd be after many hours of harvesting. The reason for that is quite bizarre. At the end of the last episode, I broke this cobblestone stair here to allow us to access the pipe that we used to extract from this drawer. I then didn't put that back. And so what happened between streams is because we've placed a standby upgrade into our collector drone, the collector drone, when it's not needed, like when there's nothing to pick up, will just basically shut down and it falls to the ground, right? Unlike the other drone that kind of just hovers, this guy is passively using pressure that he probably doesn't need to use, right? He is currently wasting pressure doing nothing. Because we've put the upgrade in the collector drone, he doesn't do that. When he is not needed, he just falls to the ground, almost dead, and waits until there's something for him to do, and then kind of comes back to life and starts doing stuff. The problem is that this guy decided to die right above the water here, and so he died, fell right down to the bottom, got stuck under this pipe, and then spent a good few hours just hanging out down there, not collecting anything, and then when I finally came over, I noticed that he was completely out of pressure, and a lot of my sugarcane had despawned. And so we're not quite at the amount of sugarcane that I was hoping that we would be at uh, by this point in the series, but we do have a decent amount of it. And as we saw at the end of the last episode, if we run all of the sugarcane through our mechanical squeezer, which is over here, by the way, this is the fourth and final section of the base. We've got another semicircle quadrant. We've got all of our resource generators here, generating all of our different stones. And again, I've just upgraded these drawers to be the exact same as the drawers over there for a bit of continuity throughout the base. Uh, we've also got our uh, little drying tables here and we have our little machine set up as well. And now we can take this over and in theory, we could make up to 64 speed upgrades with all of that sugar cane because we get four sugar, a minimum of four sugar per sugar cane now. And we do have a staggering amount of lapis available to us. And so I think the speed upgrades should be pretty easy for us to do. The only thing that is really going to bottleneck us is the lubricant, but over here, we do still have a bunch of lubricant available inside of our thermopneumatic processing plant. And I'm also happy to report, by the way, that all of these blocks, whenever you break them and replace them, they retain their inventory. So I broke all of these and then just replaced them down in the exact same order. Same with the thermopneumatic processing plant. It keeps all of its uh, wares as well when you move it. And so I think what I'm probably gonna do here is make a bunch of speed upgrades. And I do kind of want to put some of these speed upgrades into the pressure chamber. Because right now, the fact that the pressure chamber is so slow means that we lose a fair amount of pressure. Also, I do need to keep clicking here because we um, we have to keep cycling through the, uh, the lubricant. But uh, over here, 
the pressure kind of builds. If I want to make a stack of something, the pressure builds inside of the pressure chamber and then lets the iron in. But because the doors are so slow, a lot of that pressure then escapes. And so it has to spend time rebuilding pressure before it can actually commit to completing the craft. And so if we go ahead and just put some speed upgrades into this guy here, that should hopefully, oh wait, no, I think we put them into the door. Yes, we can put them in the door here like this. And you'll see down here, it says the pressure doors of the interface will open slash close faster, meaning items can be transferred in or out more quickly, which should reduce the amount of uh, pressure that's lost whenever we open or close those doors. So let me grab some more lapis and let me also go ahead and make quite a bit more lubricant over in the thermonumatic processing plant. And let's see just how many speed upgrades we can make because uh, even once we fill up the pressure chamber, more speed upgrades is gonna be very helpful in our attempts to get these finished PCBs up and running. Okay, so not too long later, we've made 14 more speed upgrades. I've been talking with the chat and I do think it's worth putting speed upgrades in the pressure chamber interfaces here, but they might be like a, um, a, a secondary concern. I don't think they're our first port of call. I think the, um, the more important thing to do is probably speed up the liquid compressor to get uh, pressure into the pressure chamber faster. I think that's gonna be our biggest uh, upgrade, especially given that the fuel that we're using here is free, the lava, and especially given that we can make the lava even faster with just a higher tier block. And I do still have a couple more of these vibrant alloy blocks in the system because previously we had five of them down and I've reduced that to three between streams. Another suggestion that's been made is that we could also look at getting some bigger tanks and maybe uh, pumping some of the fluids here out of these tanks into bigger tanks because right now these refinery outputs can only hold 16 buckets worth each and if one of these becomes full the whole system stops making the other fluids and so diesel is what we need to make more lubricant but if we want more lubricant we have to get rid of everything else now i have placed down this chest here and i've used the amazon tablet to sell everything else but i think it's gonna be easier going forward if we do have more of the liquid on standby so whenever we want lubricant we can just come over and make a ton of it all at once instead of having to wait for this to slowly but surely produce the diesel. And so uh, I do want to look at making some more of these fluid tanks. The small fluid tanks alone hold 32 buckets, which along with these 16 buckets in here would be 48 buckets in total. But I think we could take it one step further and go up to the medium fluid tanks here. Making four of these, I don't think would be that difficult. The only thing that we don't really have is a ton of plastic sheets. We should have some plastic sheets already. Let me quickly check. I shouldn't take that fall damage. But uh, let me quickly check in here. We've got nine plastic sheets. So we could make two medium fluid tanks already, but making more plastic is also not too difficult. As we've seen, we can just take our uh, LPG and uh, run it through the thermoneumatic processing plant. Along the same lines over here, another upgrade that has been recommended is the volume upgrade for the pressure chamber. This basically increases the capacity of the pressure chamber so that it can hold more pressure. The benefit of that is that whenever we go to do a craft, because there's more pressure just stored passively inside the pressure chamber, it doesn't tank like it currently does. Right now, whenever we try and do a craft, we kind of just lose all pressure in the pressure chamber because there's not that much in there to begin with. Whereas if we were to put in a bunch of volume upgrades up to a maximum of 25, that would allow more pressure to sit inside of the pressure chamber. And that way, whenever we do a craft, it just goes down a little bit, but it still has enough pressure in there to keep doing more crafts. And by the looks of it, the volume upgrades are not too expensive. They mostly just require compressed iron and lapis with a little bit of redstone and then a tiny bit of glass, of course, in the pressure tube. We do have one pressure tube here, and of course we have what it takes to make many, many more of those. And that's going to allow us to make a bunch of air canisters. 12 seems good. And then from there, we're just missing more compressed iron, which is exactly what we're making up inside of the pressure chamber. Let me uh, once again quickly go for a quick sit on the water canteen here. I do wish there was a um, a better way of doing this. There is, of course, the, uh, the filtered water, which could be worth investing in if we get a bunch of canteens going. Uh, but over here, we've got more compressed iron. We can throw in another stack there to get more compressed iron going as well. And uh, back over here, let's see how many of these can I make? 13. Let's put those in and let's see how that goes. It might not be a great idea currently because I think that doing that is also going to lower the amount of pressure in there. I think it's going to take longer to get up, but then once it's up, it's probably gonna take longer to come down. So what we should be able to do now is throw, say 10 speed upgrades into the liquid compressor. That's gonna start tanking through the lava, but it should also start increasing the pressure faster. On top of that, we could also, of course, utilize our uh, time in the bottle a little bit here to make this faster, and then maybe make this faster as well. Although at that point, we're definitely gonna be tanking through the lava way too quickly. And uh, we could definitely do with swapping out that manual block on top. 
All right, so I've upgraded to the Vibrant Alloy block here. This, I think, is going to take a while. Uh, because of those volume upgrades, it's going to take quite a while to get up to this uh, 2 to 5 range. But once it gets there, it should hopefully stay there even when we try and make like a stack of iron. So I'm going to leave this doing its thing for now. We have five upgrades in. I've taken some out because putting all 10 in seems unnecessary. We want to put enough in to where it's kind of breaking even or maybe even slightly increasing in terms of the amount of lava in the liquid compressor. That looks like it's about right. It looks like six speed upgrades is using the lava about as fast as it's coming in here. And so to me, that seems perfect. We'll leave that as it is and we'll come back and check on that a little bit later on in the episode. Now that that's taken care of, let's look at seeing if we can't make these PCBs. So the first PCB here is made with two transistors, two capacitors, and an unassembled PCB. I'll bookmark the transistor, the capacitor, and the unassembled PCB. Now, the idea for us is going to be to try and get this assembly controller up and running so that we can make PCBs the easy way. But in order to do that, we need PCBs because the assembly controller and the associated arms and whatnot all require PCBs. And so initially, if we want to make a PCB, we're going to have to do it the hard way, which is with etching acid in an etching tank. The etching tank here, I don't believe is gonna to be too difficult for us to make, but real quick, I am gonna go on a side tangent here. I'm gonna put the PCBs on the back burner again, because you'll notice we're not doing great on power. And that is because the solar panels don't start working until almost the middle of the day. The sun is out, and yet this solar panel is not producing any energy. The sun has to get to about here in the sky before, any power is made and currently this one 40 rf per tick photovoltaic cell that we have just isn't producing enough redstone flux to power the whole system through the night and through the morning when the sun is not producing any power so i think what we should probably do here is either look to make more of these energetic photovoltaic modules or alternatively we could look at upgrading the one that we have to a pulsating photovoltaic module, which I don't think is gonna be that difficult to do. It's made with one of the previous tier module, one powdered coal, super easy, two pulsating iron ingots, which I don't think we have, but we can definitely make. We have a bunch of iron and a couple of ender pearls lying around to make that happen. Two photovoltaic plates, which we've made previously, and then two double layer capacitors, which are also not too bad. They do require some energetic alloys, but we made those previously with the redstone, the gold, and the glowstone. And the only other thing required then is fused quartz. And the fused quartz is also, I don't believe, too difficult to make. In the alloy smelter, it's just nether quartz. And so any second now, we should start to see the uh, the sun getting to a point where power is generated. There it is. You'll see it's, it's quite high in the sky before it comes online. But if we were to go ahead and take a nether quartz, we can go ahead and uh, smelt that into a quartz class. In fact, I think it was uh, four nether quartz, which was required. On top of that, we can take uh, two ender pearls as well as two iron to make the two pulsating iron. And then as far as the two double layer capacitors are concerned, we are going to need some more grains of infinity, which means we do need to once again uh, grab our grindstone, which appears to have been lost in the move. That is completely fine. The grindstone, not a particularly difficult device to make. For now, I'll throw that down here. And let me just remind myself of the recipe for the grains of infinity. It is flint in our offhand, and a deep slate or cobbled deep slate in the main hand. So flint in the offhand and cobbled deep slate in the main hand, boom and boom. And then we just right click that on here. Yes, shift right click onto here. Again, it's the cobbled deep slate that's used, not the uh, the flint. The flint's used somewhat, but not anywhere near as, uh, as much as the cobbled deep slate. Once we've got a bunch of grains of infinity, we can then hopefully go ahead and make one, two, three, four of the basic capacitors. And then if we want to upgrade these, we just need four energetic alloys, which is uh, four redstone, four glowstone, four gold. Other than that, I think we have basically everything else. Let me go ahead and make, oh, we'll take some lapis with us, of course, to make some more powdered lapis. We need, uh, I think, four of that to make uh, two of these. Uh, but other than that, I think we're pretty much good to go. We might also need a bit more powdered coal because I'm not quite sure how much we have left in the system. The answer is one. So I think we have everything we need over here. Here are our villagers, by the way, just hanging out, doing their thing. Thankfully, they didn't run away when they were uh, freed from their little cage. Let's do this. And we do want to make sure this is set to uh, alloy and smelting so they can make the fused glass. Once that's done, we can throw in the uh, gold ingot, the redstone, and the glowstone. Over here, let's do the, uh, the lapis. And I'm going to give this a quick time in a bottle tap just because it's a fair bit slower than the sand mill. 
While we wait for it, though, we can also put some coal in there as well. And we'll take that out as it's done. And I think that's almost everything. We are going to have to do the uh, pulsating iron as well. Also not a problem. Boom, boom. And boom. Fantastic. And boom. Now, I am being told that the fused quartz that we need is not just regular fused quartz. Let me see here. If I try and do this one and two, there's our double layer capacitors. And we can also go ahead, I believe, and make two of these photovoltaic composite one and two fantastic but uh, yeah if we try and shift click in you'll see that it doesn't pull in the fused quartz there i believe the reason for that is that it does say enlightened fused quartz and enlightened fused quartz right here is made with nether quartz and glowstone so it's basically the same recipe for nether quartz but we do have to also feed in for glowstone which is completely fine we have enough glowstone to make that happen. Perfect. So bank over here. Let's once again, utilize our alloy smelter. Boom and boom. I'll give that a quick tap. And once that's done, we'll throw in the photovoltaic composite. Boom and boom. Nice. Okay. That should be everything that we need in order to double the output of this solar panel, which I think should be enough to keep things going, at least for the time being. It's not going to be a permanent solution. Are we out of uh, powdered coal again? We are Indeed, helps if you can spell the word coal. Uh, let me take you and let's quickly get that sag milled up. But it's not going to be a permanent solution. As we expand out the refined storage system, we are almost certainly going to run into power problems again in the future. But this is kind of a stopgap until we get into the big power here and look at setting up a, a big reactor to kind of power the late game base setup. For now, though, doing something like this should double the amount of power generated during the day while the sun is up. And it's hopefully going to mean that we have enough energy inside of this battery to get us through until the, uh, the sun comes back up again and starts producing power. Now that that's taken care of, let's finally get back to these PCBs. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do this recipe right here. We need to make empty PCBs. For that, we need plastic, gold nuggets, and redstone torches. So plastic, gold nuggets, and redstone torches. I'll make a few more of these because I think we're going to need quite a few of them. And at this point, we can kind of head back and see if our compressor has managed to get up to temperature. It has. So in here, we're up at uh, almost two. We do have another stack of compressed iron there. And uh, by up to temperature, I, of course, mean up to, uh, to pressure. And so now, if I were to go ahead and throw in the required amounts here, how much can we make? We would need nine plastic sheets if we were going to use all nine that we have here. Uh, but we are limited on redstone torches. We only have 14 of those. So we can make a maximum of seven. So that would be... Uh, Oh, sorry, we've got 13 of those. 13 would mean we could do a maximum of six. So we'll do six plastic. We will do 12 redstone torches. And then six multiplied by three is, of course, 18. So let's do something like this. And then if we throw all three of these in, that's hopefully going to do quite well for us. I will put the speed upgrades in there just to make that a little bit faster. Because why not? We've got the speed upgrades. We can make that quicker. And hopefully we are at the right pressure amount. And again, hopefully we see the pressure kind of stay somewhat stable it's going to take a while to fill it up but once it gets full it should stay full for longer so that's now done i'm going to take some of these back because i think we'll need them elsewhere this looks like it's just done nice look at that we got uh, 19 of oh sorry 18 maybe uh, it looked like a nine there for a second but we've got 18 i believe of these empty pcbs and so normally we would take these and run them through the laser program using the assembly controller and we would get the unassembled pcb which we could then craft into a finished pcb However, we don't, again, currently have access to that, and so we have to use the UV light box first to make a PCB that we can then put into the etching tank. So the UV light box, I don't think, is going to be too difficult for us to make. To make it, we need three redstone lamps, we need one pressure tube, we need four compressed iron, and we need a PCB blueprint. The redstone lamps here, super easy. Done. The PCB, though, I believe can only be purchased via the Amazon tablet. Thankfully, we do have a bunch of scrap. And we also have, I believe, even more scrap in this chest over here. And so for the first time today, let's head back to the Amadron tablet and let's see if we can't actually look at purchasing the PCB. So the PCB is here. PCB blueprint, I would like to purchase one of those. Place order. I also would like to purchase the... It says drill and laser. I'm also looking to purchase the laser program. We'll use that later on. In the episode, we'll order that as well. Uh, for now, it's taken the uh, the scraps, so my money has gone. And I believe 
that we should get the PCB. Nice. And so back over in our crafting grid, we should now be able to craft up the UV light box. We totally can. We can then place that down. Uh, we'll place it over in the pneumatic craft area. Let's put it down for now. Let's say right about here. And then if we place an empty PCB in it, uh, this does require pressure actually. So you know what? Let's move this over to here like that. Uh, that's going to start to fill up with pressure. Fantastic. And then if we put in an empty PCB, that is going to slowly but surely increase its etch success chance. So you can take this PCB out at any point in time and put it into the etching tank. But when you put the empty PCB into the etching acid inside of the etching tank, there's a chance that you get a failed PCB. The longer you leave it inside of the UV light box, the higher that etch success chance becomes and the more likely you are to actually get a finished PCB and not a failed PCB. And so we probably do want to leave these in here for a little while. I do believe that indeed we can put speed upgrades into here. And so if we do this, that should hopefully look at that massively increase the speed at which this does its job. And so once that's done, we're then going to want to take a etching tank with some etching acid and place the, uh, the PCB in there. So the etching tank is also not too difficult. It uh, does require some reinforced brick slabs, which of course require some reinforced bricks. Those are easy enough. And then we also need two obsidian, which we apparently do not have. And I believe between streams, I did put my fluid mixer away. I did indeed. Let's go ahead and get this guy back down uh, for now. Somewhere like here. Should do the trick. Um, again, I do want to look at setting up uh, unlimited obsidian at some point in the not so distant future. Uh, mostly just for allowing us to make more void upgrades, I think, for our storage drawer setup. But uh, for now, if we go ahead and grab two buckets, we can get some water from our unlimited water source and we can get some lava probably from this compressor over here because of course that compressor is uh, currently being run almost at max capacity but that should be enough to get us uh, i guess just one obsidian and we do actually want two obsidian so you know what let's grab a second one of those and although there is water here i'd like to keep my uh, base design how it is so i'll take the second bucket of water from there as well and that should be everything that we need in order to get one and two obsidian Nice. Uh, over here, are you at 100%? You are indeed. Nice. I'll throw another PCB in there just because we have it and we might as well. And now back over here, we should have, I think, everything that we need. I was a, I'm was a little concerned. We did put the solar panel down like halfway through yesterday. And so it's, uh, it's possible we don't quite have enough power to get us through today. But I'm hopeful that tomorrow we won't have that same problem. If we do, we might have to look at still putting down more solar panels. But I'm hopeful that... Once this has like a full day of use, we won't have that problem. We should also probably get into the habit of sleeping through the night as well, just to make sure that, uh, that we always have power inside of the controller. Once we have power again, the final piece of the puzzle here is the etching acid itself, which we can make in the pressure chamber with two gunpowder, two spider eyes, two rotten flesh, and a bucket. So rotten flesh, I know we have. Gunpowder, I'm also fairly certain we have. A bucket, we definitely have. And then spider eyes, look at that, we do have as well, fantastic. Can you make these? You cannot make these. So I guess it's good that we killed some spiders earlier in the series then. Fantastic. So now that we have everything that we need, it should just be a case of throwing all of this. Oh, it is a bucket of plastic. Thank you, chat. That makes a lot more sense, actually. Uh, in that case, let me quickly grab a little bit of coal out of here, and uh, we'll throw that into the thermopneumatic processing plant along with some LPG here. So let's do you and you. That's going to get us our bucket of plastic. Fantastic. And then over here, we should be able to throw in the plastic along with the rotten flesh, the gunpowder, and the spider eye. And boom, we have a bucket of etching acid. And so now we can uh, place this into the etching tank. Now, I don't believe the etching tank requires any pressure. It doesn't. It does require etching acid, of course, uh, over on the right here. And now we can go ahead and throw in our empty PCB. And that is going to slowly but surely get etched. Annoyingly, you can't put speed upgrades in here. But thankfully, we do have our time in a bottle that currently has almost six hours worth of time stored in it. And so we can also go ahead, actually, and take this other PCB here and uh, place this in as well. Both of these have a 100% etch success chance. And so if we go ahead and make this a fair deal faster, I think that's fine, actually. I was going to make it 32 times faster, but I think that's just me being impatient. We're already at 60%. This is going to take mere seconds to complete. And once it's done, we should get two complete PCBs. Boom. And boom. And by complete, I, of course, mean uh, unassembled PCBs. And it's actually very fast in, uh, in there as well. Uh, in here, you'll notice the etching acid does not get used, which is a very nice 
indeed. And uh, I do kind of, this is very fast with all the speed upgrades. I did not realize quite how fast it was. I'm uh, kind of just trying to take advantage of the uh, 16 times speed upgrade that we had on there. I do believe that if we wanted to hit champ, we could set up a little bit of automation to where we can place the etching tank here. We can do something like this, I believe, to extract the finished PCBs. The threshold here is at 100%, and so it won't move them over until it gets to 100%. And then if we just place something like a hopper on top of that, we should be uh, we in business for automation. I say a hopper, but I think we're going to need a chest anyway if we want to put in. Uh, actually, that's not true. I think a hopper would work just fine here because the empty PCBs stack. And so we, uh, uh, at first I thought I'd only be able to put five into a hopper, but I don't believe that that is the case. So if we do this and this, that's gonna feed into the UV light box. The UV light box is gonna feed into the etching tank and the etching tank is going to very slowly, but surely with the help of some etching acid here, produce the unassembled PCBs that we then need to make the finished PCBs. Now the finished PCBs here, as we saw earlier, require two transistors and two capacitors per PCB. These are made once again in the pressure chamber with plastic redstone gold for the transistor and then the same plastic uh, gold and then slime balls or, or copper, I guess, for the capacitor. So I think we're pretty good on gold, redstone and slime balls. How many slime balls do we have? We've got nine, that's fine. We can make more with the strainers, of course. And uh, gold and copper, we've got a ton of. I'm gonna use the copper just because we have so much more of it because it is being made, of course, by our copper chicken. We're at uh, over a thousand copper, which is very nice to see. So the only thing we need really to make this happen is plastic sheets. So the Twitch chat did inform me that we can in fact use the small fluid tank as a bucket for moving large amounts of liquid. So for example, we can take all nine buckets of LPG and put it directly into the thermopneumatic processing plant. From there, I don't know if we can do the same thing again. I assume we could take the plastic out like that. And then can I place the plastic down? I can't by the looks of it. I don't think I can use this to place things into the world. But of course, from here, I can uh, just go ahead and take my bucket. And if we just do something like this, we're going to uh, very quickly get all of the plastic that we need. It's not like the uh, the plastic acts as lava, so it's not going to delete any items either. And boom, we've got 14 plastic. And of course, we're going to get way more plastic from all of that LPG that we just placed in here. You'll see again, we're at uh, 16 more buckets because you do get more than one bucket of plastic per bucket of LPG. And so, so long as we don't place the uh, the two source blocks in the same place, which I think I did just a second ago. So long as we don't do that, we, uh, we should get all of the plastic that we need. Nice. And uh, from there, we can look at actually making some of these transistors and capacitors. So we have nine slime balls. For now, I think it's probably worth using all nine of those. So let's put in nine slime balls with 18 nuggets and nine plastic. Boom, boom, boom. That should make us nine capacitors. And then we'll do the same thing again with nine redstone, nine plastic. We could of course make more of these, but they're needed in a one-to-one -one ratio. So there's not really any purpose in making uh, more of the uh, transistors and capacitors. This does require a few more nuggets. In this case, we need uh, 27 instead of 18, that's completely fine. In here, the pressure is doing okay, but I would like it to be higher. There are a few things we could do here. One is we could look at uh, getting more fluid generators, which I think is probably a good idea because our bottleneck really is just how fast the liquid compressor can go. And that's not really gonna be too difficult. One thing I didn't mention, by the way, as well, is that we do have this pressure chamber glass now, which uh, is super easy to make, actually, and uh, is probably something I should have made from the beginning. It is uh, just four pressure chamber wall and one glass. Gets you four pressure chamber glass. You can use this in the construction of your pressure chamber to allow you to see what's inside of it. I've also been using it on top of my fluid generators just because I think it looks a little nicer than the regular glass. Back over here, we do have a bunch of fluid generators left over, again, because we had more for crude oil previously. Uh, and we should also have some more floppers as well. We do indeed. And so if we just go and grab a few more buckets of lava from some of our other fluid generators, we should be able to uh, double up and maybe even triple up on the amount of lava that's being produced over there and make it just so much faster. All right, so it turns out there is a, a slight bug in this version of the mod pack. The copper nuggets that you get from the compacting drawer are from the better copper mod and they are not the copper nuggets that we want. However, if you craft the copper ingot manually, you get these uh, copper nuggets from Opolis Utilities. These are the copper nuggets that we want. You can also do it in a regular crafting table as well, but uh, this is not necessary because you can also do it in the crafting grid. So back over here, we should be able to actually get these uh, capacitors and transistors up and running. 
Uh, I have forgotten how many I need. I need 18 is the number. Let me do this. So we are full up on pressure now, which is, uh, is fantastic. Hopefully we don't see too big of a drop as these nuggets make their way in. It has been pointed out to me, though, that lava is actually not the best option in terms of using the uh, liquid compressor and that we should probably look at uh, swapping that out. You'll see the uh, the pressure that didn't go down too much at all, which is, uh, is fantastic. And we have our nine capacitors. Let me uh, quickly get the uh, nine plastic, nine redstone, and then 18 gold nuggets into there. Perfect. That should hopefully make us... Wait, that's not right. I need 27, right? Out of the nine in there that should be the correct amount um but the lava is not very good over here if we click on the available fuels tab inside of the uh, liquid compressor you'll see that right at the bottom is molten plastic just above that is lava and so right here it says milliliters per millibucket so every millibucket of lava gets us 40 milliliters of air pressure in here you'll see that we have uh you know 500,000 milliliters of air inside of here that create that pressure and so the crude oil is five times better in the liquid compressor it produces 200 milliliters of air per millibucket of crude oil. Uh, that's five times as much as the 40 that we get from the lava. Now, looking at uh, crude oil from the fluid generator, this guy right here, we do get less crude oil. We get 2.5 times less. So we get 10 millibuckets of crude oil in, uh, compared to the 25 millibuckets of lava. And we also probably want to look at maybe getting some security upgrades to make sure stuff like that doesn't happen in the future, because we could definitely do with uh, not losing our liquid compressor. But the uh, the moral of the story here is that although you get 2.5 times less crude oil than lava in the fluid generator, the crude oil is five times better as a fuel. And so even despite that, just by swapping from lava to oil, we're still going to produce 2.5 times more pressure from the same number of fluid generators. And so I definitely think that's worth doing. Let's see if we can't get another liquid compressor here for that we need another small tank that's easy enough we need another air compressor that's also i think easy enough uh, compressed iron i do believe we have i think it's just over in this chest over here we also of course now have our capacitors and our transistors and so back over at the crafting grid we should be able to throw together our first couple of actual finished pcbs let's do this this and this boom and boom fantastic we're gonna need those momentarily uh, back over here, though, can I make some of this? I totally can. Uh, we can then go ahead and... Oh, I thought I was getting attacked by a mob then, but it's not. It's just a fish floundering in the corner there. That is uh, is completely fine. Let's do some of these. Let's make one of uh, these. And then I think the only thing we're really going to be missing, uh, as per usual, is leather. But we can always craft our rotten flesh into bundled flesh and then, of course, dry that out over on our trusty drawing rack over here to get us a little bit more in the way of leather. One more leather is all that we need. Fantastic. Again, once you've done the first craft, the subsequent crafts in the drying rack or the uh, soaking rack are substantially faster, which is very nice indeed. And boom, there's our liquid compressor. The liquid compressor, I do believe, can receive security upgrades. The security upgrade here is definitely, I think, worth it in this scenario. It does require the, uh, the safety tube module, which we do have, I believe. It's over in here. Although, oh gosh, I didn't realize that I'd actually like spawned out uh, lava. Although the lava here is coming from the, uh, the, the fluid hoppers. These do place lava uh, into the world, which is, uh, is not ideal. So we can place this, I think, right back down. Because right now it doesn't have the speed of grids in it. So right now it's going to be uh, completely fine. What I will do is I'll make another pressure tube. I think that's going to be worthwhile. And I'll also quickly make four more blocks of obsidian as well to allow us to, uh, to make that safety valve. And we'll get that safety valve installed, hopefully, in the liquid compressor. Before I do that, let me quickly check that I can, in fact, put the safety valve into the liquid compressor. I can. The security upgrade here adds a built-in safety valve to the machine, automatically releasing some air if the pressure would rise into the danger zone. I think having that in here is going to hopefully prevent the, uh, the kind of explosion that we just saw from happening in the future. One, two, three, four. That should get us four obsidian totally does and i think that should be everything that we need to get the security upgrade let's see if we can't make it happen we do need another one of these uh, safety modules but those are not particularly difficult to make that gets us a uh, safety two module and from there boom we have the security upgrade we should probably make these for a lot of the other uh, systems that we have around here for now though if we put this in we should be able to re-add 
the speed upgrades, and hopefully, now, as the pressure gets higher, it should just release that pressure. At least that's what I'm hoping, and we shouldn't see any explosions. Along the same lines, though, what we should do is we should definitely go ahead and grab three buckets of crude oil. We've got a ton of them backed up over here. Three. Uh, going forward, at some point, it might be worth looking at using something like LPG as our fuel source instead. The LPG, of course... Oh, yeah, that totally works. Look at that. You'll see as soon as it gets there, it, uh, it dips it down so that it's hopefully never going to explode. The LPG, though, as we can see here, is by far and away the best fuel, and it doesn't really cost us anything to turn our crude oil into LPG, right? Other than another one of these setups, right? Or even we could look at siphoning off the LPG made here, especially if we uh, can keep all of these others kind of taken care of. We could look at getting a fluid trash can as well as a way of deleting any excess fluids that we don't want to keep the whole thing going. For now, though, I think crude oil should be more than enough for us. And so uh, let me go ahead here. I don't want to lose these vibrant alloy blocks. They are by far and away the most important part of the setup here. And so we'll go one, two, and then I'm just going to place some glass down to delete that last block of lava. We don't really need it. Three. Fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and just wait for that to uh, kind of take care of itself. And once that lava is gone, fantastic. We can do one, two, and hopefully three. Hold on. This is <laughs> much more difficult than I intended it to be. That's fine. Uh, let's get rid of you. Let's go three and... Three. Perfect. Okay. It's going to take a little while for the lava to, to run out. And by a little while, I mean almost no time at all. But once that's gone, uh, we should start to see more pressure being produced. And along the same lines here, let me get the uh, leaking gas sound turned right down because that is obnoxiously loud. But now we are, you know, wasting some pressure here. But I think that's fine. This is completely full. We could look at putting more volume upgrades in here again just to kind of add in even more safety to the amount of pressure inside there. Let me give this a quick test though now to see if those volume upgrades are actually worth it. So if I take another stack of iron and I go to place that stack into the hopper, do we retain a lot of this pressure when the full stack goes in? So the full stack is gonna make its way into here and then of course into the chamber. And I'm hoping that by the end of the craft, we're gonna end up with 64 uh, compressed iron in our chest and hopefully a decent amount of pressure still in the system, ideally enough to do it again if we needed to like get another stack of compressed iron. So it definitely does still go down, but nowhere near as much. Like we've still got enough pressure in here to do that again, which was not the case before. Before it would go right down kind of below one and then we'd have to wait a while. It would take a little while to do the full stack. This time it was pretty fast. And so I'm happy with that. That looks good to me. And we're also backing up on crude oil here as well, which is good even with the nine speed upgrades, which is good to see. Perfect. Okay, so back over here, we now have two of these uh, PCBs, right? Uh, these two right here. Now, if we wanted to be able to make the PCBs quicker in the future, if we wanted to get rid of the usage of the uh, UV light box and the etching acid, which I don't know if that's strictly necessary because the UV light box and the etching acid are not actually that bad. But if we wanted to, we'd have to utilize the uh, assembly controller in this associated setup here as well. To make that happen, we would need three, four, five, six, seven PCBs in total, seven finished PCBs. Right now we've got two, and I believe we've got the capacity to make not many more because of the number of uh, capacitors and transistors that we have. We only have five of each remaining. Uh, over in our etching tank, though, we should have quite a few unfinished PCBs. We do. We've got 16 of them ready to go. And so I guess real quick, I'm going to go ahead and make some more transistors and capacitors to see if we can't get enough PCBs for us to set up the assembly controller for the laser program. Uh, and down here, it looks like we should be good on power, I think. Night has fallen. We've got uh, 170,000 FE backed up in here with the extra 32,000 in the tank as well. So we could sleep to skip the night, but I'm hopeful that this new solar panel should be good enough to not require it. And not too long later, we've got 32 more transistors and 32 more capacitors. I decided to make a bunch of extra transistors and capacitors just so that we're not worried about making them in the near future. We don't need that many, of course, because we only need, I believe, seven finished PCBs. And so we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fantastic. With those, we should now be able to make the assembly controller, the assembly platform, 
the assembly IO unit for export, the same for import and the laser. So for each of these, there are other things that we're going to need. But for the most part, I think we have a lot of that stuff. So there's the assembly controller, done. The assembly platform requires two pneumatic cylinders, which needs a cannon barrel, which requires some more reinforced brick wall, which requires yet more reinforced brick. That is fine. Let's utilize that to make some more brick wall. I have a feeling that we're going to need more of that. And so I will actually go ahead and make another set of those walls kind of preemptively. Uh, that should be, because we need a lot of these screwdrivers, actually. We need a lot of these uh, pneumatic cylinders, actually. So um, let's do a few of these. And you know what? Let's do another batch. Yeah, let's do this. I think even then, that's not going to be enough of these uh, cannon barrels, but we'll see how it goes, because we need many, many more of these. And we're also going to need more plastic as well, because you'll see we're already out there. One thing that was pointed out to me that we've been using over here is that uh, the flopper is actually pretty good for plastic automation. We can probably set plastic automation up fairly easily now, because uh, we have plastic available to be made in here. Currently, we are out of coal in there, but let me quickly go and grab some more coal to get that going. If we were to place the coal in, what we can do is we can fill up the small fluid tank with the molten plastic. Like so, and then we can place that on top of the flopper and the flopper just places the liquid down in the world as soon as it's filled up. And then that turns instantly into plastic sheets. If we were to place a hopper beneath that, that would collect the plastic sheets and uh, that would kind of be plastic sheets just automated, which is, uh, is pretty nifty stuff. So let's take this, let's do the same again here, boom and boom. We are pretty much out of LPG. Again, that's kind of just due to the fact though that we're backed up on everything else. And so what I think we should probably do, and also of course you can accelerate the flopper with the time in the bottle here to make the uh, plastic production that much faster. But I think we should maybe go back to what I was talking about at the beginning of the stream and look at upgrading the, uh, the tanks here. And by upgrading, I mean adding some extra tanks to buffer large amounts of the different fluids. I do think though, it's also probably going to be worthwhile setting up a, uh, a fluid trash can to allow us to delete any excess fluids that we don't want. For now though, let's see initially if we can't get some of these tanks down. So if we wanted to make four medium fluid tanks, we would need eight small fluid tanks, which I think should be doable. Uh, the only thing we don't really have is the iron bars. We should have a bunch of compressed iron by now. And uh, if we really wanted to, we could make more very easily. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, perfect. From there, plastic, again, is kind of our limiting factor here. One two, and we're just missing one more to get to three, which is unfortunate. Uh, I believe we have our fluid pipes in our backpack. We do indeed. And so from there, let's go ahead and let's throw down the fluid pipes here, 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 and here. This one is not correct. People in the Twitch chat are asking if the other fluid pipes are cheaper. I do not believe that they are cheaper, I guess, um, but they're not as big. This one only holds 16 buckets, whereas this one holds 64. So it's four times as large. You'd have to go up to the diamond version of this tank to get the same capacity as the gold version of this tank. So I do think these tanks from Pneumatocraft are better. You can also pick them up and use them as buckets as well, which makes them useful for the future. So we'll disconnect here and then we'll set like this and this to extract, mostly because the diesel is uh, is not full yet. And then we can do this and this to allow us to, uh, to start transferring that liquid over, which again is gonna start making more LPG for us. That LPG we can of course use to make more plastic. And then that plastic we can use to make two more tanks to fill up this wall. Now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think that the fluid pipes from pipes, I think they work on a nearest first basis, but I want to give that a try. So if I disconnect that, we're going to do a little bit of science here. Let me go and get another tank. Because if they work on a nearest first basis, and what I mean by that is that they, they put their liquid into the nearest tank that they can, as opposed to distributing evenly between tanks. In here, you'll see it looks like it's actually not set to that. If I put this tank here, yeah, see, this is unfortunate. This tank is the closest, but it is still putting some uh, kerosene in here. The reason that's a problem is it means that we can't put a fluid trash can down over here to delete excess kerosene, unfortunately. And so if we wanted to be able to delete the excess, we would have to get, I believe, the advanced pipe upgrade. Let me check. Over here, I did make another improved pipe upgrade, and we replaced the hopper so that we can pipe into the pressure chamber faster. Over here... This is fine. Okay, so it takes the improved pipe upgrade, I believe, to add the distribution. If we change the distribution from round robin to nearest first, now if we put another tank down over here, it shouldn't get any kerosene until this tank is full. And so we'll see here the kerosene at the top there is going up, but there's no kerosene over here. That is exactly what we want. Because what that means now is that we can just put a fluid trash can down over here and we will fill this tank up with 64 buckets of kerosene 
once we get past 64 buckets of kerosene, if there's still more being made, any excess will just get deleted, which is, I think, ideal because that allows us to keep producing all of our liquids all of the time, and we don't end up in a situation where we're backed up on kerosene and diesel, but we've not got any LPG, and we need LPG for plastic. So I think what we'll do here is uh, we'll go ahead and craft up three more of these uh, tier two pipe upgrades. So that's just three more basic upgrades, one, two, three, and then three more improved pipe upgrades, one, two, and three. And then over here, we can just go ahead and do something like this. And we'll also make sure all these are set to extract as well. Boom. And boom. We'll make sure all of these are set to nearest first, like so, like so, fantastic. And then the fluid trash can, I don't think is too difficult for us to make fluid trash can. It requires a bucket, some stone and some cobblestone. Super easy stuff. And I think what we probably want to do here, it's gonna look a little janky if we put it all the way out here. So I think we can probably bring it closer because that's still gonna be the closest thing for it. Let's go ahead. I think even putting it here would be fine. And then we could do something like, we're gonna have a tank there, of course. So we can do this. Uh, we don't want those to connect. So we'll disconnect that, disconnect that, reconnect that, and then reconnect that. I have no idea how I managed to mess that up so badly. But uh, if we do that, um, right now, that is gonna delete just the diesel, which is not ideal, but we'll connect that up there. Uh, the second one is ready to connect up. So up here, we can do this and this. Again, don't want that to connect up here and don't want it to connect up uh, there really either. And so that should have the same effect where it's gonna try and put the gasoline in here first. And then if it can't, it'll put it in the trash can. Same with the creosine here. You'll see these are still going up, which is perfect. Uh, let me grab the LPG that we have. Again, we can use our tank here to move that over. So we'll do this and this. That should get us enough plastic for the final two tanks. And once we have those final two tanks down, we can then connect up the fluid pipes here to here. And the top one, I might connect round to the bank. So I don't think we really want these pipes crossing because if they do cross, there's a chance that the wrong liquid ends up in the wrong tank. So it might end up looking a little odd, but I think that should be fine. All right, so not too long later, we now have four tanks down and they're all piped around into this trash can. Again, the top one there goes on a bit of a, a winding path to get around and to the trash can, but all the rest of them go a pretty short distance, but they all should fill up these tanks first and then only after these tanks are full, will they start deleting any excess to make sure that we have an even amount of everything and that everything is still being produced. Cool. Um, now that's done, we've got more plastic. I've been using the LPG and the time in a bottle on the refinery to get more plastic. We've got 48 sheets here with the ability to make even more if we need it. Uh, but back over here, let's see if 48 is enough to get the remaining items. So the assembly platform, easy enough. Then we need the assembly IO unit export. This requires another screwdriver. That is completely fine. Boom. We also then need the import, which is uh, the export, which is crafted or uh, the same again, we need two more of these pneumatic cylinders, which means we do need another one of these guys. So we need some more pressure tube. That's easy enough, along with more reinforced brick wall. That should be completely fine. Let's make more of this. Let's do more of this. Let's craft all of that into some wall. And then let's craft that wall into yet more of these cannons down here. Boom, we'll get a few more of those. That's gonna allow us to make more of these. And then with those, we can make the import unit. And then finally, the laser itself just needs one glass. Apparently it does have to be red stained, that's fine. And then I believe we just need one more set of pneumatic cylinders. And of course the red glass, which does require, oh, you can spray glass in the sprayer. That's interesting. And might not be a terrible idea, actually. We can make red dye using a couple of different items. Can you not, uh, oh, you can craft beets. I was wondering why you'd go with the eggs and clay recipe, but um, we have, Relic scrap, I believe, over here. And so I think what we, and we also have the laser uh, program as well, which we bought earlier. That's gonna come in useful in just a second here. Over in the catalog, we can purchase the red, and uh, we can just purchase the dye actually. Sure, fine. <laughs> we could have also purchased the spray can, which I guess would have allowed us to, um, to spray more glass in the future, but I don't really think we need to spray that much glass, to be honest. I think we can just go ahead and do something like this and something like this. And now we should be basically good to go. So if I'm not mistaken, this does require pressure. And so I'm probably gonna set it up somewhere around here. Let me go ahead and pick up the etching tank. I do wanna make sure we get that etching acid first. It might 
stay in there, uh, even when you break it. I'm not entirely certain. Also, let me uh, put some of this stuff in my backpack just to kind of free up a little bit of space here. Get rid of you, uh, get rid of you, and get rid of you. Fantastic. And then what we'll do, we'll put down the controller, let's say right about here. I believe this is what requires the uh, the pressure. Then I believe we want to put the assembly platform in the middle. And then around that, we want to put the import. We want to put the laser and the export. I don't think the specific orientation matters. I think all that matters is that uh, we get them down around the platform. And then now we just need to get some more of the pressure tubes to allow us to get pressure into the controller. So let us go ahead and make more of these. Fantastic. We can then pull pressure off of our liquid compressor. Like this. Fantastic. That's going to put pressure into here. We should still be voiding excess pressure. I hope. Yes. Throughout the system. So uh, the pressure valve that we have is going to do the trick. And also the liquid compressor is also kind of voiding excess pressure as well, which is good. And so now we have our export, our laser, and our import. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we want to have chests down next to the import and export to allow for the automation to occur here. So log-wise, we do not have enough. Do I have any chests? I have one chest in here, which is uh, not ideal. Oh, we can make more chests with the mineral logs. Fantastic. Okay. So with the mineral chests that we now have, we should be able to throw down, I believe, an export here and an import chest here. And I believe if we put the laser program into the controller that we have here, we can do something like this. And using this, we should now be able to turn empty PCBs into unassembled PCBs. And this time the empty PCBs can be made just straight from the pressure chamber. So let's give that a try. If I go get some redstone torches, we do of course have a lot of um, unassembled PCBs that we can use to make more regular PCBs in the future. But after that, going forward, we would like to just be able to turn these empty PCBs straight from the pressure chamber into regular PCBs. So for that, we need more redstone torches. I'm going to go ahead and make just a stack of those. We've got a lot of redstone at this point. And then we need gold nuggets and plastic. So plastic we have, gold nuggets we also have. I'll take more just to be on the safe side here. And then let's go make some more of these. Let's put in, let's say, we'll do 10 plastic. Like so. 10 plastic is going to require 20 redstone torches and is also going to require uh, 30 gold nuggets. You'll see these are moving out somewhat slowly. This is why I made that uh, pipe upgrade earlier, but we have since moved that pipe upgrade to a different pipe. And so we should definitely go ahead and get another pipe upgrade made here. Boom. And uh, we'll throw that, of course, back in over here to allow items to move faster into the pressure chamber. The pressure chamber has a ton of pressure inside of it thanks to that uh, stack of volume upgrades. And so we should see uh, very soon here all the PCBs. Nice. And with those PCBs, we can then put them, I believe, into the import chest like so. And if I've set this up correctly, it's going to work. Now you'll see it's very, 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 very slow to begin with. The uh, input arm is going to grab, I believe, one PCB, it did, out of the chest, and then it's going to slowly but surely place it onto the center panel. And then once it's placed down, very carefully, has to be done with precision, then the laser is going to very slowly make its way over and do some etching on the PCB. That's going to make a finished PCB, which is then going to be, you guessed it, very slowly moved by the uh, export arm to the export chest. Of course, in here, we can put in speed upgrades to make this all faster. And if we were to go ahead and we steal some speed upgrades from here temporarily, we could do this. Uh, I believe 10 is the maximum number of speed upgrades. It is indeed. And you'll see now that it's doing this all much quicker. And so it's just going to take the empty PCBs from here, place them in nice and fast. There we go. Laser them nice and quick and produce the unassembled PCBs. We can then take those, craft them with the transistors and capacitors, and we get usable PCBs that going forward we can use for all kinds of stuff. Namely, we can use them for the programmer. That's a table that we're going to have to use if we want to get a logistics drone to move our seeds for us. But also we can use them for things like the advanced uh, liquid compressor, this guy right here, which is able to burn through fuel faster just by itself, even without the speed upgrades, uh, and also is able to uh, produce a higher max pressure, which I believe is going to be useful for later on in at the pack. And uh, if I just type in PCB here and press U, you can see that there's quite a few crafting recipes here that do require those finished PCBs, including these pneumatic armor pieces. 
which I've not used before, but look pretty cool. I believe we can also upgrade these. Uh, this helmet can be upgraded uh, in a charging station and uh, we can add upgrades to this to make it even faster. I believe we can get some kind of like pseudo jetpack on that as well, which would be uh, very useful and maybe even some speed upgrades as well. And yeah, I think that could be a, a useful piece of armor because uh, we do have to fight the weather at some point down here. There's uh, a nether star that is required. And so I do think that uh, that armor could potentially be useful. I'll have to see how good it is at, at actually defending us. But uh, that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Desertopolis. There.